Great. So um, without further ado, I um, would like to introduce Tim Bloomer, who's going to be talking on behalf of Bell Labs. And we're talking rodent digital monitoring, I think, aren't we, Tim? We are indeed, Natalie. Although I've, I've got to say, after those first two um, presentations, I think I've just become the pantomime villain. Bringing, no, no, it's nice to have a variety. Bring, bring, I mean, bringing technology back to the uh, the forums. It's important stuff. It's you know, um, yeah, really integral in terms of you know uh, the guys and girls watching today. And um, so, yeah, without I'll, I'll leave you to it and tell us a bit about what's going on in the world of technology. Thank you very much. Um, morning, all. Great pleasure to be here. I mean, I I am here representing um, Michael Sims from Bell, who's currently um, on an aeroplane over the Atlantic on his way back from America. Um, and he very kindly asked me to um, stand in for him. Um, during the break, if you've been watching the slideshow, you will have seen some of the, the, the information and some of the product graphics I'm about to show you. Um, but it is, that, it is that difficult subject of um, technology and remote monitoring in pest control. And, you know, I've, I've spoken to a lot of my customers about this over the last what, two, three years. And there are some very understandable concerns about the encroachment of technology when it comes to rodent control. Um, generally, obviously, the cost of the systems. Um, secondly, the question arises, is it going to put us out of business? Is it going to replace the pest controller? Well, the Bell system, which is coming from Bell Sensing Labs, so they are linked to Bell Labs who make your contract blocks, et cetera, um, is called IQ. And this is a very different system in that uh, this is a fully enclosed technology. So the information that the system gathers for you doesn't actually leave the site. It doesn't alert you to traps and the boxes um, interacting with a rodent. So you only get the information out of this when you visit site. So this system doesn't use, for example, expensive gateways or expensive SIM cards in order to alert you that there's been a kill. Um, what it does do is start to give you a lot of information that you can use to improve your service delivery. So this is, as I say, a totally enclosed technology solution um, that does come at a decent price point as well. So what does it do for your business? Well, first of all, it gathers information and we'll look in a bit more detail at the sensors that it uses in a second. But this gathers information and information that you actually can't collect by doing pest control in a traditional manner. And from that information, you can then start to build an improved picture and gather knowledge that you can use to improve your service offering to your customer and also drive efficiencies into your business. There's product integration in this in that we are Killgen will be acting as the distributor for this system. We will initially be selling four different types of sensor. Um, and the good thing about this is there is no gateway to connect to. It's a really easy, simple to set, uh, system to set up on site. And therefore, if you need to increase the number of sensors on a site for any particular reason, maybe on one part of the site, you've got a sudden upsurge um, in rat activity it's very easy to add sensors to the system without any complex um, computer work. So it's really easy to use, really easy to set up, and it will undoubtedly drive uh, potential efficiencies through your service offering. So when we're looking at cost, this is really about potentially say you, you, you spend some money up front in order to make you more efficient and drive some service savings through your business. From that, you should also start to get a much better customer experience in terms of using the data you collect to drive solutions on those sites in a much better, uh, more rapid manner. And it should also free up some time in order to interact with your customer and spend time talking to your customer more. That may well see growth. So that may be a tool that you can use in order to grow your contract base. And of course, it will hopefully in increase your retention of your contract customers. Um, it's estimated at the moment that all the contract customers across the whole of the UK pest control market, um, you guys are losing around about 15, 16% of those contracts every year. And there might be a tool here that you can use to save some of that. And finally, 
this is um, in relative terms an affordable system. This is not going to break the bank. And if we, as we go through, if we look at this in terms of time saving and converting time saving into a cash value, then this system can pay for itself very, very quickly. So it is definitely affordable. So we're getting rid of some of the hurdles that exist with the current crop of remote monitoring systems. So what products are in the system, if you like, what, what constitutes the system? Um, well, the first one is the trap for T-Rex trap. So this is the traditional T-Rex trap into which Bell have built um, an integrated battery. So it has a life, an integrated sensor that tells when uh, anything's changed with the trap, or the trap's been triggered, and that sensor in the computer part of that sensor will record that activity, and then it has uh, an antennae to send that signal out when you're on site. Um, then we've got the pulse wrap box. Now this is uh, a similar sort of technology. The difference here is that they've actually put a sensor sensor plate into the run through tunnel of the box, so the, so it's a standard wrap box if you like. Um, which allows you to use all of your traditional methods. So you can use traps, you can use non-toxic monitoring, and you can use your, your identified products within this system. And that makes it unique from many of the other systems or all the other systems that are currently available. So you're able to use traditional methods of control, but the integrated sensor will actually record the activity each and every time something passes through the box. So how does it work? Well, it, this works on Bluetooth. So unlike something like Zignal, which is working on LoRa network, and you've got a very big range from the sensor to the gateway to get it out to the internet, this relies on Bluetooth. And we all use Bluetooth every day for mobile phone connections to vehicles and around our houses and our places of work. So we understand that this has a relatively short connection distance. Typically, anything between you've got to be on top of the box um, up to about 30 meters, and that will depend on environmental conditions, and it will also depend on the structure of the building. The reason why they're using Bluetooth is A, it's fundamentally cheaper to produce a system, and B, as I've already said, the data does not leave the site. You pick up the data when you go to site. They don't need to put anything uh, that's going to transmit great distances into the system. Everything in the system is waterproofed and fully integrated. So it's IP rated 67. So this is a system that you can take outside and it is weatherproofed. And the battery shelf life is anything between two years and potentially more than three years. And that clearly depends um, generally on the amount of activity going through a trap or through one of the boxes. So uh, within the sensor, you've got a small computer chip um, and a small piece of computer work. Every time something interacts, interacts with the trap or the bait station, that sensor will record that activity. It will also generate a date and timestamp. So every interaction is then recorded. When you go to start, you then log into the mobile app on your mobile phone or tablet. And as you start to carry out your inspection of the site, it will start to download that data from all the sensors. At that point, the app is collecting all that data and the software enables you to interpret and filter data in different ways. And therefore to start to understand what is going on on the site and starting to use that data to solve problems in a much more targeted manner. There's also a computer portal that sits behind this. And within that, you can produce graphs, you can produce um, pie charts, you can actually analyze the data in detail. And you start to build this picture and it, will, it starts to tell you the story of what's happening on the site. Um, so for example, you may have a number of bait boxes in one part of the site where you know there's rat activity, but what you don't know is what time of day. This system will tell you that something happens for argument's sake on those bait stations at 5.30 every evening. And then you can discuss with the client of what is happening at that particular time that leads to that rat activity on that site. That will drive through an ability then to obviously report in a different way, to update your customer in a much better way. Um, 
give them reassurance that you're able to offer a better service. And that should obviously then move into retention of customers uh, and improve your service offering. But let's look at a bit more detail at the product range now. So the Pulse Rad IQ. Um, this is a very, very sturdy, well-built uh, plastic bait station. So you're not just getting the technology, you are getting a bait station with this. And if anybody's ever used the Bell Ambush bait station, for example, you know that Bell produce a really top quality plastic bait station. Um, the bait station will undoubtedly meet the requirements of the new labeling, for example, that's coming on the denticides. So you get the bait station and you get all the technology built in. So you're getting the Bluetooth sensors and the base station enables you to use all of your normal methods. So it will hold up to eight blocks of redenticide. It will hold up to eight blocks of um, DTEX, not, uh, monitoring blocks, for example. And you can use either a single T-Rex or two of the, for the rats, or you can use two of the, the mini uh, T-Rex for the mouse. They can be standard traps because the sensor pad in the tunnel will pick up the activity and notify you when you're on site. And we have a very good locking mechanism on these boxes for security, but equally to make, make it easy for you guys to service. Internally then, um, we've got the, say, the integrated sensor in the tunnel and your ability to use those different um, types of control measure and most importantly, the antennae that will send you the information on the site. There is a smaller version, which is the Pulse Mouse IQ. Um, that's uh, available now. It's Again, it's a very sturdy mouse box. It comes with all exactly all the same features of the uh, RAT IQ. Um, very sturdy, easy to open from your point of view with the key, but will be very, very tamper resistant can take a slightly small amount of bait and obviously uses the, the mini Rex traps. Same technology all the way through. Then we have the Trapper T-Rex IQ. So this is your standard Trapper T-Rex trap for those that know it, a very effective rat trap and mouse trap, very durable. Um, but with the IQ elements, you never need to check an empty trap again. So we'll have a look at some slides in a second that show an application of that above false ceilings, for example. So those dead areas on site, you can install the Bell IQ trap and you only go and check those traps where you know they've gone off and the app tells you that. Of course, you still need to build in a little bit of maintenance for changing the law and that sort of thing. But if you think about accessing those areas, they often bring uh, health and safety risks and time risk of using ladders, going into crawl spaces, um, people's unboarded attics, false ceilings, etc. They can all these traps therefore can be checked from ground level as you pass underneath those areas. Within the traps, we have um, obviously the normal treadle plate that has a sensor underneath it, so the trap knows when it's been triggered. Integrated battery, and that is waterproofed. And then you have the Bluetooth sender, which is the integrated antennae. So that's all built into the trap. The mouse trap, um, which we don't have yet, that is coming. That's just at the final stages of its development, works in the same way. But it has one fundamental difference in that this has a separate base that contains the batteries. And therefore, with the mouse trap, you can change the batteries as they run out. Other than that, you've got exactly the same features and exactly the same advantages to your service offering with the Bell IQ trap, mouse trap. So the other part of this, of course, is the app. This is the part that you use to analyze the data that it gives you. And this system really is about giving you some intelligent data. So the app is available on all operating systems, both Android and um, iOS for Apple. Uh, and it is your window into the data. So if you've had a rat passing through one of the, um, the bait stations, let's say on 10 occasions, when you log into the app on site, that sensor record will show you all of those 10 um, activations of that sensor. So it collects all that data and you can view that data in, in various different ways. Um, the app is very easy to use. 
Um, you know, we, we've been playing with it and ready for demonstrations and that sort of thing. Um, easy to use and you start to build a record and it will do reporting for your customer as well. So at the end of your visit, once you've downloaded all that information, you've viewed it, you've made decisions about your control and where you're going to place your control, where you're going to focus your control measures. Um, all of that data is then uploaded to the cloud. So when you interact with a trap, so let's say you reset a trap, you go into the app against that trap and you say you've reset it. If it's one of the bait stations and your interaction is to replace some of the bait involved, then you tell the system how much redenticide you've used. And you can add various different types of redenticide to the system. So whatever your redenticide of choice is, you can edit the, the, um, the filters and put that into the system. When you're finished, upload it to the cloud, and you can also then send your customer a treatment report via PDF. When you download, or as it's downloading the information from the, the traps and the, the rodent boxes, you, it will use this key to tell you exactly which ones have been downloaded, which ones are undiscoverable for some reason, and most importantly, which ones have had some sort of event, whether it's a trap trigger or whether it's uh, rodents passing through into the bait station. Um, and it allows you those, those codings and that key will change as you service the box. So complete transparency on what you've done on site. There's the service report it will produce. Um, so it's telling your customer date and time and how long that visit has taken place. General comments is where you could use that for free form typing recommendations to the customer. Uh, it then has a summary of all the sensors that you've actually inspected. So that's purely the ones that have needed checking. What you've actually used, so what um, any materials, uh, be it non-toxic, be it denticide that you've used and the quantity. And then it records the full inspection record for every single um, sensor that has had an event, so an activation. Um, and I'm not sure how clear that is in your screen, but if we look at the right-hand page at the top, for example, the bottom sensor there, it's telling you there's been two events, and one was a mouse and one was other. Um, so it does record that level of data. The portal itself, there's a couple of screenshots here to show, give you an idea of what you can do. So when you finish the visit, you can actually go to the dashboard. You can look at the various graphs. Um, you can select date ranges. So you can say, I want to know what's been going on on the last three months of the site visits. Um, bar graph on the left-hand side towards the bottom of this screen. The, the vertical scale is giving you the number of events or the number of activations. Um, by sensor type, and then along the bottom, you've got the day. So we can see that you know, halfway along, there was a massive spike in activity. What happened at that time? We can drill down into that and say, why, what time were those sensors being um, activated? What was going on site to draw those rats at that specific time? Um, that may drive some efficiencies through the business. It may help you to target your time on site to those key areas. For those that are employing people, of course, it gives you the ability to monitor the activity of your technicians on site uh, um, in a bit more of a detailed way. So the IQ solution then is to allow you to work smart. And I think we all understand here that uh, technology um, is raising some concerns and understandably some concerns within the industry. You know, those questions I said at the start, Will technology ultimately replace the pest controller um, is, the, is the biggest one. Can, can remote monitoring systems do the job of a pest controller? Well, actually, they can't because the big part of pest control is the eyes on the ground. It's not the bit you do with the bait station or the trapping box. It's the bit you do in between, looking for the droppings, looking for the damage, and looking for those other signs of rodent activity. That's where your service and professionalism comes in. You deliver that really important part of pest control. You also therefore have to use the, you know, the thought process uh, and the problem solving part of um, the equation 
in order to then deploy the right measures in the right place to solve that pest problem as quickly as possible. And that will bring reassurance and a better service to your customer. What IQ does therefore is give you this data that enables you to offer better service and solve those problems, hopefully in a, in a smarter and quicker way. It will bring efficiencies to your business. Um, you won't be able to read the numbers, I don't think, on the screen. But the example they give here is clearly a very large warehouse, but the total number of devices is 228. Now, if that was standard pest control, that's taking nearly two hours to service. By replacing that standard pest control with Bell IQ, yes, you're walking the whole site, so you've still got eyes on for the droppings and everything else but you're not stopping to service them unless you have to. And in this particular example, which is a live example from America, it's reduced that down by an hour and a half, that service time. That's a massive cost saving. It's affordable. If we then apply that cost saving into, you know, 60 quid an hour, whatever you're charging, if you're saving 20 minutes per visit, that's 20 quid you're getting back into your, your bank balance. You're not reducing your service, your customer cost, you're improving your service efficiency. And you know, that's the other side of your balance sheet that needs to be looked at sometimes. Um, essential, well, this is more about, you know, do you need to do, you know, this is a demanding job physically, all the bending, the kneeling, do you need to do that? Do you need to take the risk of looking above false ceilings? Um, can you drive uh, those efficiencies? And of course, whether we like it or not, uh, the future is undoubtedly going to have some form of remote monitoring in it, especially in those in those of you that are working in the food industry, um, the food manufacturing industry. Without doubt, this is going to get driven from top down through your audit standards. So contactless rodent control. Here's a couple of examples of how this might fit. And yes, these are clearly very Americanized, but let's look at a contract where you on the left, where you may have some apartments or you might have some student accommodation with bait stations. In this particular case, you've got five bait stations. You've got the hassle of getting access at the right time. You've got to go in and physically check um, all of those bait stations. It may not be convenient for that particular customer for you to do so. And that can bring hassle and possibly revisits. If we install Bell IQ, then suddenly you could actually be checking that from outside if the range allows you to. And so it's less invasive for the customer. It's quicker for you because then you target only the apartments or the flats that you need to go and visit because they've got a problem. It opens up some really interesting possible contract opportunities therefore so if we think about you know blocks of flats um possibly second homes possibly the holiday let trade where at this time of year when you've got holiday makers in, the, in their cottages and their houses uh, they don't want you going to inspect well actually bell iq offers a system whereby you could stand on the street and service that call and then arrange a suitable time to go back and deal with the problems that you've picked up from IQ. You don't need to do that invasive bit of pest control in some circumstances. As I've already said, this will then um, send automated reports to the customer. So you could, in that case, say you've checked it, send the report to the customer and then arrange that time to go back. Facilities managers that are remote from sites will love this information. I've certainly been involved with one of my customers lately where they are looking at remote monitoring into an FM business. And the FM business love all these sorts of dashboards with graphs and, and visual signs of what's going on. Um, and they will almost certainly win that account because of it. And in practice, so what does this look like to you guys in the field? Well, there's a typical bait station. You've just opened that up on an inspection. And as you can see, your bait blocks were all eaten. So your previous inspection was probably four weeks ago. And so in that four week period, with this picture in this situation, we know we've had something on the bait blocks. 
we probably make the assumption, we probably look for the signs that we assume these rats. What we don't know, of course, is that one rat on one visit doing all that, that, all that um, consumption of the bait, is it multiple rats on one evening or is it multiple rats over a period of time? Because we're the best way in the world, traditionally, the way pest control has been done, we cannot tell that. With Bell IQ, it's different. Same bait station, the sensor pad on the run-through tunnel. So we know exactly the number of times a rodent has visited this bait station over that four-week window. We know the date and the time of day that that's happening each time. And from that, we can start to build that picture. That enables us to start and look at historic and seasonal trends within each of the bait stations. So do we get more activity at a certain time of day? Do we get more activity in the autumn, uh, et cetera, et cetera? And from there, we can start to be more proactive in our approach. We know the areas of site that are going to get regular activity. And so we can target our use of our control measures. That drives efficiency for you because you use your time more wisely on site. And also, of course, it drives compliance with stewardship of redemptocytes because you're, you're able to justify your use in a better way and a more targeted way. With traps in practice, um, this may be a typical situation in a warehouse where there's a mouse problem and there are 20 trapping devices actually deployed. Some of those are clearly at a high level. So if I'm physically gonna go and check all 20 of those traps, I've got the risk of the forklift running around. I've got the risk of working at heights. To check some of those, I've probably got to get a cherry picker or a cage on the forklift. And clearly that's going to take me some time. If I replace those with IQ traps, all I've got to do is walk into that warehouse and give it a few minutes for all that information to come down to the app. And then I selectively go and check the traps that I know have had an activation. That reduces that health and safety risk and it undoubtedly drives that efficiency in time through my visit to that site. The time savings. Um, these, these two graphics are based very much on real life um, situations in America where Bell have been selling this system for some time. So before IQ, a vast bulk, so what's that, nearly 75%, 70% of your time is actually spent checking your devices, whether that's traps, whether that's bait stations or non-toxic monitoring points. That's a bulk of what we do on site. Yes, we spend some time looking for new recommendations. And yes, because we're walking the site, we will naturally inspect for other signs of rodents. Our second biggest chunk of time is creating the report. And then we spend, you know, probably 10% of our time actually reporting to the customer. That's traditional pest control. After IQ, that graph changes. So we actually spend less time checking the devices. That's dropped from 70 to what, 30, 30 40%, 35% of our time checking the devices. We're still walking the site. So we're still actually spending more time now checking for those other visual signs like the droppings, um, like the damage to product. We're spending more time, therefore, making recommendations and looking for new recommendations. And that's compensated for by the system creating the report for you. And that frees up more time in that visit to actually go through that report with the customer. And that's the really important time. Um, customers very often stay with a pest controller because they get on and they get that conversation with the pest controller. Um, I've seen many occasions where perhaps the pest control is not the top standard, certainly when I was operating, um, but they wouldn't move because they liked the technician and they liked that interaction. And the more time you can spend interacting with the customer, the better. So less time on your devices, less time doing the paperwork and that, dare I, dare I say, not my words, mindless servicing. That's the mind numbing bit if you're employing people where people do get bored, technicians do get bored for that reason. Therefore, you may retain staff uh, in, a, in a better way. 
And most importantly, by using the data and being able to make more recommendations, you can solve that account, that problem at that account very much quicker. That drives retention, that drives efficiency through your business because you're spending less time on call outs and follow ups, you're spending less money on redenticides, dare I say. And what can you do with that time? You can use that time to go and make money elsewhere. False ceilings, dead voids, that sort of thing, as I already mentioned, but you spend less time checking these. You don't need to get your ladder out and get above that false ceiling. You walk underneath that ceiling, you check the devices, and only the devices that have had an activation drives time saving. More time spent actually looking in the areas where rodents lurk because you freed up all that time from having to check the bait stations. Free up time reporting. And if you want to, giving your customer the access to view that data as well so they can see that you're doing a really good job. And more time talking to your customers and telling them what a wonderful job you're doing. And before I get onto the questions, I'm going to leave you with, with a question for yourselves. If this system frees up all of that time, what will you do with that extra time? Thank you. Great. Thank you, Tim. That was perfect timing. Um, just getting to there. We've got seven questions that have popped up. Um, a couple of them about, um, I say, the, the manufacturing side of um of the device but um one on the limited space on the bait box in terms of the company name and requirements for labeling and things is that is that something other people have brought up oh can you hear me oh i think we've frozen are you there tim uh, oh hang on uh, yeah oh, again i missed that yeah oh, can you hear me now is that a little I've, bit better I've got yeah i've got you back now Great. Um, so yeah, someone there's a couple of people asking about uh, sort of the manufacturing side of the devices. But um, Stephen here just said it's a shame there's limited space on the bait box for company name and the requirements for labelling and stuff. Is that an issue others have brought up? Um, it's not something they bought up with this one. I mean, I do know from things like the Bell Ambush. Um, I'll double check that, Steve, because I think we can now print on the Bell boxes in Osset. It used to be that we had to buy a, you had to buy a whole pallet in America. So let me double check that. Fabulous. So they can come come and have a chat to you, can't they? If uh... I'll double check and feed that back for you, Natalie. Fabulous. Um, and another question from Andy. So um, why have not why sorry why have the rat trap sorry why not have rat traps the same as mouse traps so that you can change the batteries. Um, and, and it's a very good question. Unfortunately, it, it's one I will have to take away and speak to Michael about because it's not, it, you know, it, it's that question has not come up before. Um, but I will certainly get an answer for you. Yeah, so it's all good feedback, really, as well, isn't it? Because things you can take back and then, um, you know, if it's something that can be uh, improved, and that's always great. Um, uh, Stuart asks, can the sensor in the rat traps differentiate between rat and mouse visits to the pulse rat? Yes, is the answer. They're, they're, they're picking up the weight of the creature going through. Fabulous, good. Yeah, there's quite a lot of that going on at the moment in terms of monitoring. They're doing it with squirrels, aren't they? Yeah, I did mention in, in the presentation that, because it obviously time frames. I mean, this, this presentation started as something like 130 slides. Um, <laughs> um, By me. On the data, one of the, on the portal, one of the things it's telling you is not only the number of activations, but what's actually activated it. Great. Good information. There's lots of comments about, um, you know, Thanks, Tim. Even a digital Luddite like me, this is Simon, uh, could make the system work on site. So it sounds like a you know a good sensible system. So yeah, just some good feedback there. Yeah. Um, is there an, an initial or an yep. approximate cost that you you the would have? Left, literally left that one out. Um, <laughs> right. In terms of the two T Rex traps, so the rat trap and the mouse trap. Um, they are in the region of eighteen pound per trap. Mm -hmm. um, I think personally, the boxes are better. You're, you're going to buy bait boxes for sites anyway. The bait stations are coming in at a full list price of round about one hundred and thirty to one hundred and thirty-five for a carp bait case of six. So you're looking in the region around about the twenty twenty-two quid mark. 
for a bait station. With all that technology to drive those um, efficiencies through a business, it's not extortionate by any means. No, indeed, it's about uh, yeah, manage, managing how you're going to implement it to make sure it works for you um, financially. So we've got a few more. We're, 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 we're about at time, but we've got a few more questions. And I want to go through them because I think it's important for everybody to get, get these answered. So um, Sammy here says distant monitoring systems is sometimes quite expensive if you have several traps and several routers. Um, you know, time and money will be saved for pest control companies. But why would a customer buy your system from pest control companies? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question because um, there's a, you know if we look at the whole question of digital monitoring, um, most systems are using expensive gateways, and the gateway you know if we look at Signal, the gateway is five hundred quid. That adds a lot of initial cost in, and you've got two options there for the customer to either buy the whole system up front and you manage the system for you. Um, they then get the advantage of capex spend and tax write-offs and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, or if you've got the cash flow, you tend to lease the system to them for the period, and you take a view that you make your money over a longer period because you can write it off against, um, or your accountant can write it off against tax. The Bell system, this system, you know, I don't think those personally, I don't think those costs are extortionate that they're going to break anybody's budget. To actually start including that in a contract price and sell the benefits of what it brings to the customer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're talking maybe, you know, if you're putting six, 10 boxes onto a site, we're probably only adding 100 to 120, 130 quid into your cost up front. Mm -hmm. um, you could charge a bit more for that. Because what you've got to bear in mind with this, this is fundamentally about you delivering a better service that some customers will want and saving yourself some servicing time whilst maintaining your contract price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and absolutely. And like you said at the end there, what are you going to do with that spare time? And that's where you can start using your expertise more and actually you know, using your new knowledge and your eyes to look at other things to help your customers and provide more value and so on and so forth. Will you go out and start making money out of Austin's? There, there you go. There is um, that. There is that. You know, I mean, one simple starting point, if, if I was going back to my servicing days, I'd be looking at sites where I've got multiple infestations, mm. or regular infestations, and saying, can I use data in a different way if I install this system on there to get rid of all those follow-up visits that I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, if you're visiting a site, that's time, that is money. That's it. It's all, all weighing it up. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's a few questions within one um, uh, um, submission here from Ross, so I'll, I'll break it down. So, would I'll remote te would yeah would remote technology be more beneficial to the environment as the travel time to and from locations would be removed? And that's a big thing at the minute, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and I think that that Ross that, that is certainly applicable to the other systems that we we sell, uh, in that they could in theory be used uh, to monitor sites with less visits. Um, uh, you know, I, I firmly believe there is a market for Zignal, for example, to sell contracts where you don't go to site. They're limited. But I'm thinking about, for example, um, the cabins you get at all, bottom all the phone masts, where they're difficult sites to get to. So, yes, some systems can undoubtedly benefit the environment from that point of view. Okay, we can get into a very long-winded discussion around, you know, batteries being thrown away at the end and all that sort of thing. Um, the bell system, because it's this enclosed system, it's only on the site. You have to go to site to get the data. It's probably not going to stop the number of routine visits you have to do. What it mm -hmm. will do, and you will get some benefit in this way, is if you use that data to solve problems quicker without the number of follow-ups and call-outs, then, yes, you will start to drive fuel savings and a better environmental footprint without question. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, it, 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 do customers have access to the app as well? You know, so local like councils. Um, yeah, I think I saw. Have access, yes. Yeah. Fabulous. Um, we're just going to go on to Stuart's question, just because we are running out of time. I need to yeah. move on soon. And um, what happens to the bait point once the battery runs out? It becomes an expensive mouse trap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, 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 change the battery. The bait station. You know, it's the whole thing's not thrown away. Um, I will just double check. There is just that one little gap in my knowledge. Um, I think the new system, it's all integral. They might well have a bait tray in them. 
with the technology, in which case you just replace the bait tray. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Uh, listen, Tim, we really appreciate you, you know, stepping in and, and covering and doing this talk for Bell. So um, I think that all these questions, again, people can can speak to Bell about it um, and yourselves and, and get those questions later down the line if they need to. And again, you can go and find out and learn about this stuff as well, as, as will I. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like questions I don't know the answer to because it gives me an opportunity to get my CPD. Absolutely. Um, and if I'm allowed to say it, of course, all of myself and my colleagues, we all have demo kit. So if people do want to see it live on demonstration, we can do that. Mm-hmm. Not just Fantastic. Through, that through Kildia. And Great. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. All right, Tim. Take care. Thank you. Stay cool. Fine, Sue. <laughs> all right. Thanks.